Brandon's dad hopped in a car and tried to run over his son with it. $47 million contract extension. Was injured by a family member in another bazaar accident incident the one major stain on his resume in 2007 alone brandon was involved in four different incidents that all ended in arrest threw a punch missed and ended up KOing a television tripped on an empty mcdonald's bag stabbed in the stomach brief and prompt conversation with ricky williams and i saved the saddest 2007 story for last man check this out bro so Brandon Marshall gravitated to the game at an early age and do so a lot as a kid. He'd be walking down the streets of Pittsburgh on his way to practice and see everything from gun violence to drug deals. But as much as he saw, his scariest memory as a child was formed based off of something that he heard. When Brandon was a kid, his dad walked out of the house and didn't even make it out the driveway before Brandon heard gunshots. The shots were loud and piercing. They sounded like they was right there. He runs outside and sees his dad laying on the ground severely wounded and the sound of those shots would continue to ring in brandon's ear for years to come fortunately brandon's dad survived extreme resiliency and maybe it was in that moment where brandon thought to himself maybe he too could survive anything today we examine the life and career of brandon marshall sports media talking head host of probably the best sports podcast out there and oh yeah this former nfl star is a six-time pro bowler as well in my opinion brandon's evolved more than any nfl player i've ever covered and while i may often disagree with his hot takes on tv from a standpoint of growth as a man i have a deep and profound respect for what brandon marshall has been able to accomplish and really you should too. This is what happened to Brandon Marshall. To the way. All right, quick before we jump into today's video, I got to give a massive shout out to today's video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN allows you to get the best internet connections possible by giving you access to over 5,200 servers in 59 different countries boosting your speeds in the process. Not only does it allow you to choose the fastest connections, but it also allows you to unlock apps like Netflix. See, Netflix gives you access to content based on where you live, meanwhile, other content is blocked. But with NordVPN, you can unlock 100% of Netflix instead of just watching a percentage of it. Nord also provides great online security, and they do this by providing double data encryption for increased online anonymity. And that's great when you're at home, but it's perhaps even more useful when you're in an airport or a coffee shop using Wi-Fi. Utilizing NordVPN in those situations can save you a world of hurt. And unlike most online services these days, they don't record any of your online activity. So if you're in it for privacy and security, this might be a good choice for you. You can use it on up to six devices at a time, and this can be great for gamers, anime enthusiasts, and really anybody who's using the heavy dose of the internet, which is probably all of us in 2020. Let's keep it a buck. Nor was selected as the best VPN for 2020, and they're recommended by leading tech sources like VPN Mentor and PC Mag. So if you're interested, click my link in the description and get 68% off Nord VPN. That's only $3.71 per month, plus an additional free month at nordvpn slash flimlo wraps so you can do that or use the coupon code flimlo wraps at checkout once you go to nord's website but that's not all it's december so we got the special christmas deal so every single purchase of a two-year plan will get you an additional four months for the free that's right so again don't forget to click the link in the description thanks once again to nordvpn for sponsoring the video without further ado let's get it during his playing days, Brandon Marshall had tons of moments to show how unstable he could be at times. This is mostly due to his borderline personality disorder, which we will discuss more later in the video. The disorder is believed to be developed through a person's previous experiences. And a quick look back into his childhood begins to paint a certain picture. So Brandon's dad went to jail shortly after Brandon was born. Then his pops got out on a work release program and married his mom during that time. But only a few months after signing a marriage license and Brandon's mom was now signing a restraining order against his dad. Brandon's dad goes back to jail, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. So through multiple divorce filings, the shooting incident we talked about in the intro, and one incident that included 12 balloons stuffed with a highly addictive and illegal substance, let's just say Brandon experienced some crazy during his childhood. 
given the way he grew up to think he was going to come out of that situation go on to make millions of dollars and have a camera on him every single day like to think that nothing was going to go wrong it's unrealistic Brandon moved around a bit as his parents split. He spent time growing up in Georgia and in Florida. He went to high school in Orlando, and this is where the football portion of our story actually begins. Let's get it. Brandon played basketball and ran track, but the football field was home for dude. At 6'4", 195, dude played on offense and defense and dominated with not only his physicality and athleticism, but the way he played is what really defined his game. This kind of angry, hyper-aggressive style would later earn him the nickname The Beast. Brandon was only a two-star recruit as a wide receiver, but he was offered a scholarship to go play for the Florida Gators as a safety. He wasn't interested in that, so he took his best best offer to play wide receiver, which was Central Florida. Oddly enough, he still ended up playing some safety at UCF following a string of injuries to the secondary and he actually managed to catch an interception. Offensively though, he nearly went his whole career without making any noise at least on the field. In 2004, when Brandon was a junior, dude was arrested on Halloween night. Now we all know, college days, Halloween, all bets are off. Who knows what's gonna happen? And Brandon actually got into an altercation with the police officer. He was arrested for supposedly assaulting the officer and resisting arrest. At this point, he already wasn't going crazy on the field and this just derailed the rest of his junior season. Finally, when his senior year rolled around, Brandon had the breakout season he had been waiting for. 74 catches, 1,200 yards, and 11 touchdowns. After that one season of production, Brandon felt he had done enough to be a first round draft pick. So in a moment that really wasn't too well thought out, Brandon decided to throw a draft party. Not only was he gonna throw a draft party, he was gonna throw it during the first night, okay? So it's round one or bust at this point. He didn't invite all these people to the house. But in this 2006 NFL draft, there was only one wide receiver taken in the first round, and that was Santonio Holmes. Brandon, who, if I'm being honest, completely set himself up for this L, was devastated. He had invited his whole damn family here to watch the draft, and now, he's not getting drafted. Now, one of the symptoms of borderline personality disorder is an extreme reaction to anything perceived as rejection. So even though it would be years and years later where Brandon was actually diagnosed, he was already suffering from the symptoms because when he wasn't drafted in the first round, he had a violent reaction to it. I mean, he sobbed and weeped and cried in the bathroom for hours and hours and hours. He was devastated as if the first round was the only round in the draft. He actually said in an interview, he didn't even know why he was so damn devastated, but you know, he couldn't control it. Second round goes, third round goes. Brandon hasn't been chosen. He doesn't know what the hell is going on. Turns out a bunch of teams had actually taken him off of their draft boards because of the trouble that he'd gotten to in college. And then on top of that, there was some rumors that he had some attitude problems that he maybe wasn't working as hard as he needed to work and a lot of teams just took him off the board because they felt he was undraftable but fortunately for Brandon a lowly assistant coach who he had a meeting with was actually a lot more important than he probably thought current 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan was then working as an assistant in Houston so as part of the pre-draft process he met with Brandon spent time with him and put him through a workout if you ever seen a Brandon Marshall interview incredibly charming intelligent dude so I can imagine you know, spending time with him as a coach, you'd be like, bro, this is this is a great guy. What do you mean? So Kyle Shanahan was impressed on that front. And then when he put him through the workout, he was like, yo, the dude is a beast. Regardless to how he felt, Kyle actually didn't have any pool over in Houston. So they completely ignored his recommendation and took Brandon off the board anyway. So you know what Kyle did. He picked up the phone and called his pops. A three-time Super Bowl champion who wasn't so quick to judge a player based off their past. Also, he trusted his son and he took his recommendation very, very seriously. Of course, I'm talking about Kyle's dad, Mike Shanahan. So Kyle talked Brandon up to his dad. So when Brandon was available in the fourth round, Mike Shanahan didn't hesitate to pull the trigger. And it didn't take long for Mike to see exactly what his son saw in Brandon Marshall. He was a good dude and a beast on the field, but it also didn't take him long to realize exactly why there were so many red flags. Brandon used to be tripping, bro. Now, don't allow yourself to be fooled by his sometimes less than stellar takes as an analyst. On a football field, Brandon Marshall was an absolute 
monster. Over the course of his career, he gained over a thousand yards receiving eight different times and did it seven times in a row during his prime years. He went over a hundred catches six different times and made six Pro Bowls. He was also a two-time All-Pro and set an NFL record for receptions in a game with 21. 21 catches in one game, bro. Dude was dominant for a time. And he did all of that across four different teams and for the first 10 years of his career, every team he visited he produced numbers at an elite level unfortunately he was just as elite when it came to producing trouble at first it was small but persistent things outbursts here late for me in there he had an unpredictability that made him unreliable over the course of a season and to make matters worse this trouble quickly began to spill over to off the field in 2007 alone, Brandon was involved in four different incidents that all ended in arrest. There was an incident while leaving a nightclub that left his friend and teammate Darren Williams fatally shot in the neck. There were several articles published around this time that suggest that Brandon could have been the actual target in this situation. And Brandon allegedly told the police that if he hadn't acted rowdy, the incident may have never happened. There could be some truth to this or Brandon could be doing what many of us do, blaming ourselves in situations that we had no control over. Either way, it definitely stuck with him because when he was pulled over and eventually arrested later that same year for a DUI, he asked the cops why they weren't out looking for Darren's killer. He then went on and on about how he hated the city of Denver. Dude was in a dark place. Try not to judge him. And I saved the saddest 2007 story for last, man. Check this out, bro. Brandon was at a bowling alley with his dad. Now, that sounds like a wholesome evening. Like if you was an NFL player and you had to go out, you just wanted to go out and do something. Going to a bowling alley with your dad seems like the safest, most wholesome thing you can do. But if you remember the little bit we talked about Brandon's dad in the intro, and you should know, this thing went left. Like it went way, way left, bro. So Brandon's dad started a huge argument with his son over money and brandon had taken care of his dad but it was starting to get to the point where his dad was just trying to use him as a meal ticket i actually saw a clip where brandon said he loved his hometown but he hated going home because every time he go there it's just a whole bunch of people acting like he owes them money anyway brandon refused to give him any more money and the argument escalated to the point where brandon's dad hopped in a car a car that brandon probably bought and tried to run over his son with it bro the man tried to run over his own son and then he's screaming out i'm gonna ruin your nfl career like you really don't know what these nfl players be dealing with bro that's why you gotta try not to judge you gotta really try it's hard because we just automatically judge like that's just what we do as humans but you gotta try not to judge at least before you get some more information on this stuff like can you really imagine that bro and then somebody come ask you a stupid question in the media after what you just dealt with last night you might just go on a crazy rant like you might just do that and when i see the man that brandon has become in spite of dealing with a dad like this bro like my respect for the man go up it do with that said brandon's transformation really didn't begin till you know a little bit down the line and there's still a few more crazy stories we got to get into before we get to that point now in 2008 his emotions got the best of him once again when he threw a punch missed and ended up KOing a television the man punched straight through the tv and severed an artery in his arm and if he was ever going to be arrested for anything it really should have been for the ridiculous story that him and his team put out after he messed his arm up it was the worst cover-up ever and just oddly specific for no reason they said he tripped on an empty mcdonald's bag that's a lot of adjectives empty mcdonald's bag professional athlete steps on it slipped and severed an artery in his arm now there, there's not a single person who bought that not a single person it just made me wonder how much was he paying his handlers like if that's the best story that's the best narrative y'all could come up with like bro i could have wrote you something way better than that back on the field brandon had developed a close bond with quarterback jay cutler a bizarre but really strong friendship and more of a brotherhood to be honest i remember these cats being covered in the media and they kind of came across as one of the more unlikable duos in the league and this was mostly just based on the way they recovered because as time has passed and i've heard both of them talk at length multiple times i like both of them they dope 
cool cats. I actually did one of these videos on Jay Cutler earlier this year. Be sure to check that out right after this one. Basically what I realized, they're both good dudes, but they do have odd personalities. Odd personalities tend to struggle in professional sports, especially football. You'll do a little bit better in something like basketball where there's less people on the team and like the superstars stand out more. But we all know football is the ultimate team game. So when you have a personality that causes you to stand out in what would be considered a bad way, it can be a big problem. These two together was kind of like a buddy cop film. Just one of the oddest couples you're ever gonna see together. Unfortunately, unless we want this video to be 35 minutes plus, we really don't have the time to get into the dynamics of their relationship. All right, look, we maybe we got a, just a little bit of time, just real quick. Brandon is a highly emotional guy. I mean, to the extreme. This would often get him into trouble as an NFL player. Jay Cutler, polar opposite, okay? His lack of emotion would get him into trouble as a football player, especially as a quarterback. When you look like you're just not interested, it doesn't go over well. And it's kind of funny how two cats on opposite ends of the spectrum are both condemned, right? And it goes to show anything like at the extremes can be bad brandon loved the camera jay cutler hated him brandon's more extroverted jay cutler's more introverted they're both supremely talented and put up good numbers and had moderate success together they fought they joked around but at the end of the day they'd have each other's back they had a complicated bizarre odd but you know a pretty good relationship so when jay cutler was traded to the chicago bears you can guess how Brandon took it. Brandon promised himself he was not gonna overreact. He said, okay, I'm a professional, I'm an adult. They traded Jay, but guess what? I'm gonna get through this season as a professional. Then the first day of training camp rolled around. The first day, this man was refusing to catch the ball and just being disruptive. He's punting the ball, like what is he doing? He put his house up for sale and demanded a trade. Now don't get it twisted, his behavior was already alarming at times when Jay Cutler was there. Like Jay Cutler had said himself, he loved Brandon to death, but there was times where it's like, he didn't even know the dude. It's like he just go off on these tangents and become a different person for periods of time. After Jay left, Brandon's behavior started to get so bad that his family's slight concern escalated into full blown fear. Like they were scared that Brandon couldn't take care of himself. Like he was unstable. The NFL ended up mandating that he attend a therapy session. Brandon went to the session and his life changed forever. That's cap, it ain't happen that easy. <laughs> What actually happened is he went to that one session, completely refused to cooperate with the doctor, walked out of that thing no better than he went in, and that was that. In 2010, Brandon was traded to Miami and agreed to a $47 million contract extension. Then he did what he always did, another 1,000 yard season. It seemed like he could do this in his sleep at this point. The following year in 2007, history repeated itself. Brandon had another 1,000 plus yard season, made the Pro Bowl, and was injured by a family member in another bizarre accident, incident, whatever. So something happened at the Marshall house and there are conflicting stories on this. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be careful here. Some kind of way, Brandon was stabbed in the stomach. All right. His wife initially called 911, but she ended up hanging up before you know, the whole process was done. When the police came, Brandon told them that he fell, that same, same, same excuse, you know? They did not believe him and it seems that Brandon and his wife had gotten into it, so they assumed she stabbed him and then she was taken into custody. Now again, I don't know exactly what happened in this situation and I really don't need to know because Brandon and his wife got through this, you know what I'm saying? It was a, a rocky point in their relationship. Things got violent, they got kind of crazy, but guess what? They still together today and they seem like they're doing very well, so that's what's up. Apparently it just made them stronger. But this was actually the incident that changed Brandon's life. Once he turned the TV on and saw the headline be about his wife, it was at this point that he finally realized, you know what, bro? I gotta get some help, I'm tripping. So the incident finally spurred Brandon to go back to therapy after a brief and prompt conversation with Ricky Williams, seems random, but yeah. And this is when Brandon was finally properly diagnosed 
with borderline personality disorder. Some people look at mental disorders with a certain stigma. So for them, a diagnosis is something they would fight against, like on some, I promise you I ain't crazy or X, Y, Z. You know, we, we've heard this before. But when you a real one and a problem solver, a diagnosis is great because now you know how to address the issue. That's exactly what Brandon did. He studied the disorder and learned everything he could about it, referred to it as his playbook and treated it as such. He learned that the disorder caused difficulty managing emotions and behavior, an intense fear of abandonment or instability, and a difficulty tolerating being alone. Inappropriate anger, impulsiveness, just to name a few of the symptoms. This accounted for most of the negative situations that Brandon had found himself in. The random draft night breakdown, the outburst back in Denver, KOing that TV and messing up his arm. I mean, the list goes on, right? And contrary to what some people might believe, the diagnosis actually empowered him. It put him on a journey that would see this former misfit as he became a face for mental illness that helped remove the negative stigma and raise awareness. Here you got an athlete in prime physical condition, running around, catching touchdowns, doing commercials, doing all of this stuff, all while dealing with this mental illness, which lets you know, guess what? This ain't gotta ruin your life. Like you can still live your life you just got to make sure you on top of this and guess what 2012 was the last time brandon was in any legal trouble and there was actually an incident earlier this year where the police were called while this man was trying to move into his new home and watching the video he was obviously and rightfully pissed off but he still handled the situation like an adult the dude that called the police in this situation was completely in the wrong but i can just imagine 2012 brandon handling this situation a completely different way, things escalate and you know, that goes down a, a really ugly path. But fortunately, he's matured and he was able to handle the situation as a man, had two kids in the car and you know, move on about his life, so that's great. Watching this video still pisses me off though. Jumping back into the story in 2012, Brandon was traded to the Chicago Bears where he reunited with his former brother turned enemy, jay cutler i just say turn enemy because they had this moment but now that they were on the same team again the two made up and brandon marshall proceeded to set the league on fire with 118 catches for 1500 yards and 11 touchdown this was his one and only first team all pro season brandon marshall cashed in again signing another 40 million dollar contract my dude was getting paid but unfortunately that same year he was kneed in the back during a game he broke two ribs and collapsed the damn lung he was already older at this point and kind of seeing this damage good, so the Bears dealed him to the Jets for a seventh round pick. But dude wasn't done. His first year in New York, he put up another 1,500 yard season and scored a career high 14 touchdowns, bro. A career high in season 10. So let me just say this now, Brandon Marshall's career is completely slept on. Like in year 10 that's crazy bro after that year he played a few more seasons in the league but was never quite the same after very brief stints with the giants seahawks and saints brandon finally retired in 2019 he left behind franchise records with three different teams and was the first player in league history to record a thousand yards receiving with four different ball clubs. He's part of the illustrious 10,000 yard receiving club and even broke the Pro Bowl single game receiving record when he caught 21 passes in the Pro Bowl. But the one major stain on his resume is an ugly one. In a 10 plus year career for a guy who played in his prime for four different teams and in total, I think six different teams, he literally never played in a single playoff game. That is crazy. So many years, so much production, no playoff games. Moving past the playoff thing, man, digging back into Brandon Marshall's career, like I actually forgot how much of a BC was. Like I remembered him being cold but I didn't remember him being that cold for that long. But as impressive as his numbers are, what he's become off the field is even more impressive. He's continued to be a spokesperson for mental health awareness through foundations, on TV shows, and now on his own podcast called I Am Athlete. It's a great show with honest conversations between Brandon and other former NFL pros like Chad Johnson and Fred Taylor. Look, I'm gonna say it one last time. I do not give a damn how you feel about Brandon's hot takes on TV. When you look at the man he could have become 
based on what he had to deal with with his dad and dealing with a mental disorder that went undiagnosed for the vast majority of his life. When you look at that and think about what he could have become and then instead look at what he did become, he should 100% be celebrated for that. And there's a lot of misfits out here that could really use dude as a role model. I just feel like dude is a perfect illustration that you do not have to become perfect, but you can become better. You feel me? You can optimize who you are and become the best version of you. This was what happened to Brandon Marshall. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, enable notifications, and click the next video I got popping up on the screen right now. I'm gonna catch y'all next time, fellas. Peace.